Thank you for your attention. And we'll now uh, begin the Board of Trustees meeting. And I'll ask the Secretary to please call the roll. Trustee Atkins. Here. Trustee Berg. Here. Trustee Kanata. Here. Trustee Howard. Here. Trustee Jenkins. Here. Trustee May. Here. Trustee McInnes. Here. Trustee Mueller. Here. Trustee O'Malley. Here. Trustee Rowe. Here. We have a quorum, so we will begin the meeting. Please note that there are items on your agenda that need to be adopted before I call for a vote. Are there any items that you wish to be extracted from the consent agenda? Here none. I move for the adoption of the agenda, including the consent agenda items. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed but nay. The agenda is adopted. The minutes for the December 3rd, 2021 board meeting were circulated in advance. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Here none. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify by saying nay. Minutes are approved. At this time, I recognize President Lakari, who will introduce today's campus spotlights. President Lakari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Mickey Hepner, who serves as the Dean of the College of Business here at Austin Peay State University. He earned his degrees from the University of Oklahoma, specializing in public finance and policy. Under his leadership, the college has made great strides. And uh, he will provide you a little bit of a, a overview of this of the college and where it's headed. Dean Hepner. Thank you all. We're all, all set and ready to go. Thank you for inviting me here today. Um, give me the chance to, to share a little bit about what's going on in the College of Business, to tell you about where we are as a college and also where we're planning to go in the next few years. This truly is an exciting time to be a business guy. The College of Business was uh, founded in 1968, and over the next 40 years or so, we kind of vacillated between being a college, a school, and a department, and we finally became a college again in 2012, 10 years ago, and since then, we made tremendous strides growing and becoming a, a, an important part of this community. The college consists of uh, 28 full-time faculty members in two academic departments. Uh, we have four uh, undergraduate degree programs and 10 professional staff serving more than 900 students uh, in those programs. The enrollments for our four undergraduate degree programs are on the screen in front of you. We also have a master's degree program uh, in uh, management as well. I also want to take just a moment to share with you a little bit about the structure in the College of Business to help you understand a little bit more about how we operate a little differently than most of the other colleges uh, on our, our campus. Uh, the red squares that you see displayed on the screen are our faculty positions in the college, organized in our two academic departments, the Department of Accounting, Finance, and Economics, and then the other department is the Department of Management and Marketing. And then the black squares on there are professional staff, many of which have been added in the, in the last few years uh, to help us with student recruitment, student success, and external outreach. Uh, but all of these people are incredibly important to us. All of these are enabling us to take a step forward. Uh, I have a really simple management philosophy. Uh, it's really just, just a, a few things. One, you try to hire exceptional people. Two, you help them believe they can do exceptional things. And then three, you give them a chance to prove it. And I feel fortunate each and every day to have a team of people in the College of Business who are committed um, to building a better business school, to, committed to doing truly exceptional things. And I'm going to share with you some of those things that we're doing in the college, but I want to, I want to emphasize that the stories you're going to hear today are not mine. It's theirs. They're the ones that are pushing us forward. They're the ones that are making us better each and every day. When I came here four years ago, we wanted to, to begin a conversation, to think through who we are, where we want to be, and how are we going to get there. And that really started with a conversation about why we exist. What's our purpose as a college. Why does the College of Business exist here at Austin P? And we believe that our purpose here is to contribute to the economic and intellectual vitality of this region uh, by delivering relevant academic programs, producing well-educated graduates, and by providing meaningful support for local small businesses. 
And so everything we do has been designed to help support that purpose. That is our why, that's why we exist. And so we put in place the processes, the systems, the incentives, the support to help us live out this purpose, to help us become what we are intended to be. So shortly after that, we adopted a new mission statement in the college. I'm seeking a bunch of feedback uh, from, uh, from, from stakeholders inside the college, from those outside the college. And we've decided that we are wanting to be a teaching focused business school committed to student success, serving the Clarksville and Nashville metropolitan areas. Those are three core identities, uh, teaching focus, committing to student success, serving both Clarksville and Nashville that we've been trying to embrace. And we go even further to explain how we want to do this by pushing students beyond the textbook. It's a phrase I like to use a lot as we talk about in our college, how are we gonna create the right experiences? How are we gonna push students beyond the textbook to help them prepare for real world um, success? And so from that mission statement, we decided to build this, this structure and identify five broad strategic initiatives, five broad areas of emphasis that we call our pillars of progress. The five ways we're gonna live out this mission, that we're gonna pursue this purpose. And they are to provide high quality learning experiences for our students, pushing those students beyond the textbook to help them succeed. We're gonna commit in new ways to student success. We're going to invest in our people to help them be as successful as they can be. We're gonna make stronger connections with our community and we're gonna work on building and enhancing and improving our reputation. Everything we do as a college has to support one or more of these pillars. And the things that don't support or don't fall into this are the things we've tried to stop doing so that we can become better at this, at this mission. So I'm gonna walk through a few examples for you about how we try to, to live out each of these pillars, how we try to get better each and every day following these pillars of progress. First, pushing students beyond the textbook creating these high quality learning experiences for our students. Thanks to Larry Carroll, uh, we've been able to offer in recent years, our students the opportunity to, to play and work with a real $500,000 student managed investment fund. We call it our GOVS fund. But what this uh, opportunity gives our students is the chance to make real investment decisions in real companies with real money. And it's a very different feel for a student to be investing in a faux portfolio versus knowing that your gains and your losses are real. And every quarter, those students, just like the professional money managers hired by the Austin P Foundation, every quarter, those students have to stand before the Austin P Foundation's investment committee board and defend their selections. It's a true, real learning opportunity for our students, something that we could not have offered uh, any other way. This is a picture of our students who have traveled to Chicago recently um, to present their work um, with other schools who have similar types of student managed investment funds. Thanks to Larry Carroll, we were able to offer that. Thanks to our faculty and the passion, their commitment to creating new learning experiences, we've been able to also offer new service learning courses to our students in the last few years. Service learning courses are courses where students do well in class by doing good in the community. So those, these are the, the courses where we have like a group of accounting students in an accounting class. We get certified by the IRS to help low to moderate income families here in Clarksville file their income taxes. We have a group of marketing students in a marketing class who work with local nonprofits to develop their social media marketing strategies and try to do well in the community and also doing well in class. We have faculty who are, who are developing new study abroad experiences, making sure that our students are understanding all of the forces and all the factors and all the different cultures around the world. This, this year, we plan to have a, um, a study abroad experience in Argentina, led by one of our accounting faculty members. We're we'll be learning some global business as well as international accounting rules, and also a study abroad trip to England in the next, um, the next few months. Thanks to our, our faculty, we were able to offer more of these innovative learning experiences. Thanks to the generosity of our donors, we've also been able to allocate $40,000 a year to help support our students being able to travel to attend professional and academic conferences. We believe it's a win every time our students get a chance to be in front of and interact with business professionals and leaders. And so this year, from Charlotte to Chicago, from New Orleans to, yes, of course, Nashville, our students have been traveling to interact and engage and meet with business professionals. And thanks to our, don our, don our donors, 
we've been able to make that possible. We talk about being a teaching focused business school and committing and investing in those resources to help our faculty become the best at that teaching function. And it's important to note, however, that, that at a university, the research function is critical to supporting teaching, to helping our teaching function be as successful as possible. In fact, one of the things that separates a university from other educational institutions is that our faculty don't just convey knowledge, we ask them to advance it. We want our faculty to be subject matter experts, people who are, who are leading the way, who are understanding the current trends and the changes, who know the stuff better than anyone. And a way to demonstrate and maintain that, that expertise in your discipline is to engage in research activities. And so in the last three years, we've been challenging our faculty to push themselves to, to publish their research, to engage in research and produce uh, publications in higher quality journals than ever before. We use a ranking system for journals that is widely used in business schools from around the world to guide our faculty in this process. And as a result, what we've been able to see is from 2013 to 2017, our faculty had generated three of these highly ranked peer reviewed journal publications. In the years since then, in the last four years, that number is up to 17. And we've actually set an ambitious goal of having 25 in just the next two years. And so our faculty are embracing the challenge to up their research, and they are beginning to get recognized for that. For example, our, one of our newest assistant professors of economics, Dr. Alif Demerol Sagram, has been here for nearly two years. But over that time, she has also received a research fellowship at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government in their Women in Public Policy program, where she gets to interact and engage with leading scholars from around the world, addressing the public policy issues that are affecting our families. And she's right here on our team, committed to being here in Clarksville, but she's shaping policies around the world. Those are the kind of faculty we are wanting to bring here. And what that does is, is we have faculty who are producing higher quality research, it also gives our faculty a chance to engage students in new learning experiences with research activities. So we actually set a goal of having 20 of our students a year presenting their research at academic and professional conferences. And this year, we're gonna have 21. We want our students to do that because this is a high impact learning experience and the students have to do the research, share the research, present the research, it helps them learn the concepts much more deeply and their learning outcomes improve significantly. Our research also is a way for us to help support local businesses. We have a group of our faculty that have actually worked with the Better Business Bureau here in Middle Tennessee on a survey of their members to help them improve their marketing and outreach efforts for their membership as well. We are a teaching focused business school. But our faculty are truly engaged in research activities as well. And we are better as a result. In the College of Business, we talk about the importance of committing to student success. You've heard me mention that a lot. And I want to emphasize that for us, the student success spans all the way from recruitment of students through the pipeline to their eventual employment post-graduation. And as a result, we've made significant investments to improve our student success team and enhance the support we provide to students. We want to be a leader on campus as well as a leader across the state. We have more than tripled the size of our student success team in the last four years, including um, adding uh, a couple of new undergraduate um, advisors, a new graduate advisor. We were the first college on our campus to have our own career readiness coach serving the, the, um, the internship and career needs of our students. And then this last year, um, thanks to the support of Provost Con Cronley and, and, um, and President Licari, um, we were able to, to hire a communication specialist to help us with student recruitment to help us improve the way that we reach out to um, our prospective students those who are interested in pursuing a business degree. That commitment is helping us improve our enrollment numbers and helping us become the fastest growing undergraduate college um, on the, uh, the Austin P campus. As, a, as a, um, a business school committed to serving this region, we try to, to enhance the connections we have with our community leaders we do so for two broad reasons. 
One, uh, we want those connections to help provide benefits to our students, to provide new learning experiences and opportunities for our students. And two, we want those connections to provide a way for us to help local businesses as well. I'll start about, I'll talk about the first group first. Um, thanks to a partnership with Legends Bank. Um, in the last couple of years, we've been able to offer the Legends Bank Legends of Business Speaker Series to our students. This is a monthly speaker event where we bring in local business leaders uh, to help share their expertise. And we just ask a simple, uh, have a simple ask for each of our speakers. We want them to just come share their story, their story of leadership, the story of the successes, but also the stories of their failures and the struggles that they've had. Our intention and our purpose for this is for our students to see people who at one time were just like them, one time sitting in a classroom, one time learning, hoping, and dreaming, and for once be able to see themselves in those exceptional roles. To date, we've had speakers like um, Terry Turner, the president and CEO of Pinnacle Financial Partners in Nashville. We've had uh, the president and CEO of the Nashville Predators, um, Sean Henry. Uh, we've had uh, our own uh, Larry Carroll, the founder of uh, Carroll Financial. Um, Trustee Kanata joined us uh, a few months ago, the dealer principal at Wyatt Johnson. Um, and just as, uh, last week, uh, we had uh, Mr. Eric Snyder, who's the editor in chief of the Nashville Business Journal, um, who spoke to our students as well. A tremendously transformative opportunity. Those partnerships extend in other ways as well, creating opportunities for our students. This year, we partnered with JCPenney for the first time um, ever as part of their national suit up event. It's an opportunity where, where JCPenney provides discounts on professional clothing to, to college students. We had more than 100 students here at Austin P who attended this event receiving discounts um, from JCPenney. Uh, and for some of them, it was the very first time they were able to buy a suit or professional wear, professional shoes, um, thanks to this tremendous discount that JCPenney provided. These, these partnerships um, truly make a difference in the lives of our students. <coughs> Each week in our college, um, in our building, in the lobby where you had dinner last night, uh, we invite local um, firms to come. We call it our Recruiters and Residence Program, a chance for local firms to come and, and set up in our lobby and, and share their story with students to help get them interested in internships and career opportunities so that our students can see employers and, and understand that, that we are here to help our students go from being here to being hired in the future. And then earlier this month, the College of Business hosted its first ever Women in Business networking event. I believe it was just right out here um, in, in, the, uh, in the, the entranceway. Uh, this was a tremendous opportunity for our female students to get a chance to, to meet and engage with women <coughs> business leaders here in our community. We're also committed to helping this community grow as well. You may or may not know that the College of Business is also the home to the uh, Austin P. Tennessee Small Business Development Center. And that Tennessee Small Business Development Center in 2021, led by Dr. Lorna Peters, uh, generated $5.6 million of new capital infusion into the Clarksville uh, metropolitan area. And that, that infusion was responsible for creating 51 new jobs and retaining 260 um, previously existing jobs. So we are committed to making this place a better place to, to live, work, and play. I told you about where we are. I also want to give you a sense of where we're going, because we are not content with just being the school that we've been. We have much bigger dreams ahead of us. Part of that is developing new programs to expand our portfolio to help serve the needs of this community. Uh, I do not know of a vibrant, dynamic metropolitan area that can sustain its, its vibrancy without having an MBA program at its core. Um, and so we are committed to developing an MBA program and offering it right here in Clarksville, Tennessee. It is one of the most common requests I have received in my four years since I've been here. Uh, when can we have an MBA? Uh, and so we are, we are delighted um, that we are going to be able to, to, to move forward with that. Uh, this coming fall, the College of Business is also um, assuming the um, Austin P Hospitality Management and turning it into a business concentration. So we will begin offering hospitality management courses within the College of Business to help support that tremendous um, industry right here in central Oklahoma. And we're proposing a new human resource management undergraduate degree program um, that will help serve the needs in that industry. And in the coming years, there will be an MIS degree program as well. We are committed to providing the programs that this community needs going forward. I've also shared with you a little bit about the stories that we expect to see in the future, the places that we expect to improve. 
we're pleased to announce that in the coming weeks or the coming months and years, we'll begin developing the Student Success Center in the College of Business that will be the future home for the college, our, our college student success team. Currently, our, our, our student success team, our advisors, our career placement person are housed in three different locations within the building, within our building. This will bring them all into the central, uh, a central location to be the premier location for all of our student services. So if students want to learn about our programs, get advice for our programs, or find career opportunities from our programs, this is the place they will be. I'm delighted that this will be coming in the next few years. We're also going to be renovating our classrooms to create some modern professional learning experiences. Uh, classrooms that foster engagement between faculty and students, and engagement between students and students as well. We'll have some lecture hall renovations. This is our premier learning space in the building, but we want to make it accessible for all of our students and all of our faculty. So I'm delighted that these improvements hopefully will be coming in the coming years, as well as the creation of a new boardroom, seminar room that will serve as the, the main meeting space for our faculty, our students, and our student organizations. These are all part of the, the, the project that was included in, in Governor Lee's budget, which we are hopeful that the legislature will eventually approve. I want, I want to close out today with just a reminder that it is clear to me that this truly is a great time to be a business cup. I like to tell people that, that I'm an economist by training. I'm a dean by profession, but I'm a governor by choice. I'm here because I want to be here. I'm here because I believe in this place. I believe in what we're becoming. I believe in what's possible. I believe in, in this community being one of the most uh, economically vibrant communities in the nation. I believe in this university where I'm able to see my colleagues from other colleges across campus, other divisions across our university, and people who are accomplishing things that at one time people thought weren't even possible here. I believe in my teammates in the College of Business. All of them, the students, the staff, the faculty, the friends, the people who are coming together, who are buying into the idea that we can build a better business school. I believe in us. And I believe that if you look at the evidence over the last few years, you will see that right now, as of this day, the College of Business is providing more innovative learning experiences than ever before, producing higher quality research than ever before, building stronger connections than ever before, engaging our alumni better than ever before. In fact, I would argue and I would believe that at this point, in this time, the College of Business is the best it has ever been. But the thing that excites me the most is that I believe that despite all the progress, despite all the steps forward, despite all of the advances I've shared with you today, I still believe the best is yet to come. Thank you all very much. I do. Yep, I'd like to see our appreciation for you and your staff hosting the board last night at our event and dinner with you over there. It was a uh, very eye-opening. Your plans, your future, all your plans you and your staff have for business students. And we congratulate you on that. And again, thanks for hosting us last night. Well, thank you for being there. We were delighted to have you. Let you see a little bit about where we live and also see a bit about where we're going. Good deal. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll get back to board business. The minutes for the December 3rd, 2021 board meeting were circulated in advance. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Here none, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Do we have a second? second. 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed signify by saying nay. The minutes are approved. Mm -hmm. At this time, I I'd like to recognize President Lacari, who will introduce today's campus spotlight. President Lacari makes, um, yeah. So, we did that. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, we, we did that. I got the wrong page. All right, we're ready for committee reports. But before we do that, I want to do a special recognition of our student trustee for the past year. So on behalf of the entire board of trustees and President Carr, I want to express our appreciation to you, Molly, for your service to Austin P and represent the student body to the board of trustees. You have been an outstanding in representing the students and given all of us a better insight into student life and student needs on campus and in our community. I also enjoy seeing your basketball game. <laughs> Uh, we all have been enriched by your participation in our board meetings, and we all wish you the very best in the future. And I think President Kari and Dr. Clark have. Would you come forward? Um, I just want to say thank you for this experience. Um, it's truly been an honor serving on this board, and it's been a pleasure getting to know all of you. Um, so I just thank you for being so welcoming and letting me in on this part of Austin P. This is a team that I've type of team I've never been on, so it's just been a great experience. And I thank all of you. Great. First action item is from the Academic Affairs Committee. So I recognize Trustee May, Chair of the Academic Affairs Committee, to give us a report of the committee meeting. Thank you, Chairman Atkins. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present my report from this morning's Academic Affairs Committee meeting. The committee approved minutes from the December 3rd, 2021 Academic Affairs Committee meeting. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item, which you approved today by consent, which is consideration of the revised Academic Affairs Committee Charter. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item, which is on the agenda for your approval today. Tenure upon appointment for Dr. Matthew Croston and consideration of tenure appointments for faculty. Provost currently um, presented information items relating to letters of notification for Bachelor of Business Administration in Human Resources Management and a, master's, a Master of Business Administration and uh, SEC COC reaffirmation updates. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Trustee May. Trustee May's report contained two action items that we need to consider as a full board. Trustee May, do you have a motion on approval of the tenure appointment for Dr. Matthew Croston? Yes, you have before you the information regarding the tenure upon appointment for Dr. Matthew Croston, inaugural director of the Institute for National Security and Military Studies. By direction of the committee, I move that the board approve tenure upon appointment for Dr. Matthew Croston. You have heard the motion to approve the tenure upon appointment of Dr. Matthew Croston. Since this is a motion of the committee, I, a second is not required. Is there any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed to signify by saying no. The motion carries. Trustee May, do you have a motion on consideration of tenure appointments? Yes, you have before you a copy of the list of faculty recommended for tenure. By direction of the committee, I move to approve the list of faculty recommended for tenure. You have heard the motion to approve the list of faculty recommended for tenure. Since this is a motion of the committee, 
a second is not required. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, signify by saying no. The motion carries. The Audit Committee report, I now recognize Trustee Miller, Chairman of the Audit Committee to give us a report on the committee meeting. Thank you for the opportunity to present my report from today's Audit Committee meeting. The committee approved the minutes from the December 3rd, 2021 Audit Committee meeting and Audit Committee executive session. The committee also reviewed and approved the revised FY 2022 audit plan. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item, which you approved today by consent, consideration of the revised audit committee charter. The committee heard presentations on the following information items. A, internal audit related documents. B, internal audit reports released between November 11th, 2021 and February 18th, 2022 with a list of outstanding audit recommendations. C, internal audit client satisfaction survey results for calendar year 2021. D, results of a contract monitoring review performed by the Tennessee Department of Military. E, results of the Comptroller's Office Financial and Compliance Audit Report for fiscal year 2021. And F, finally, updates on outstanding investigations and litigation. That concludes my report of the Audit Committee. Thank you, Trustee Miller. I now recognize um, Trustee Jenkins, Chair of the Business and Finance Committee, to give us a report on the committee meeting. Trustee Jenkins. Thank you for the opportunity to present my report from this morning's Business and Finance Committee meeting. The committee approved minutes from the December 3rd, 2021 Business and Finance Committee meeting. The committee reviewed and approved three action items, which are on the agenda for your approval today. Consideration of non-mandatory fee proposals for the 22-23 academic year. Consideration of housing rates for the 22-23 year. Consideration of welcome center renovation and exterior improvements project increase. The committee also reviewed three informational items. Review of the governor's budget recommendation. Review of the status of higher education emergency relief fund. Review of fiscal year 2021 financial report. That concludes my report. The Jenkins report contains three action items that we need to consider as a full board. Trustee Jenkins, do you have a motion on the non mandatory fee proposals for the 2022 2023 academic year? Yes, uh, you have before you a copy of the non mandatory fee proposals for the 22 23 academic year. By direction of the committee, I move to approve non-mandatory fee proposals for the 22-23 academic year as written. You have heard the motion to approve the non-mandatory fee proposals for the year 2022 and 2023 academic year as written. Since this is a motion of the committee, a second is not required. Is there any further discussion at this time? Hearing none, uh, we will ask the secretary to please call the roll. Trustee Atkins. Yes. Trustee Berg. Yes. Trustee Kanata. Yes. Trustee Jenkins. Yes. Trustee May. Yes. Trustee McGinnis. Yes. Trustee Miller. Yes. Trustee O'Malley. Yes. Trustee Rowe. Yes. Nine yeses. The <laughs> motion carries. Trustee Jenkins, do you have a motion on housing rate for 2022 2023? You have before you a copy of the proposed housing rates for 22-23. By direction of the committee, I move to approve the proposed housing rates for 22-23. You have heard the motion to approve the proposed housing rates for 2022 and 2023 academic year. Since this is a motion of the committee, a second is not required. Is there any further discussion? Here and then we'll ask the secretary to please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Berg? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McGinnis? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Nine yes. yeses. And motion carried. Trustee Jenkins, do you have a motion on the Welcome Center project? Information about the increased scope and budget of the Welcome Center project was provided to you in advance of this meeting. 
By direction of the committee, I move to approve the cost increase for the Welcome Center project. You have heard the motion to approve the cost increase for the Welcome Center project. Since this is also a motion of the committee, a second is not required. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion carries. Thank you, Trustee Jenkins. Uh, and from the executive committee, I appreciate the opportunity to present my report from this morning's executive committee meeting. The committee approved the minutes from the December 3rd, 2021 executive committee minute meeting. The committee reviewed and approved the following action item, which you approved today by consent. Consideration of the revised executive committee charter. The committee also reviewed and approved the following action item, which is on the agenda for your approval today. Consideration of the revised Board of Trustees bylaws. Information about the proposed revisions to the Board of Trustee bylaws was provided to you in advance of this meeting. And by direction of the Executive Committee, I move to approve the revisions to the Board of Trustee bylaws as written. And since this is a motion of the committee, a second is not required. Is there any further discussion? If not, I will ask the secretary to please call the roll. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Berg? Yes. Trustee Canada? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Trustee McGinnis? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Rowe? Yes. Nine yeses. Okay, the motion carries. And that concludes my report of the executive committee today. Uh, the Student Affairs Committee report. I'd like to recognize Trustee McInnes, Chair of the Student Affairs Committee, to give us a report of the committee meeting. Thank you, Chairman Atkins. Thank you for the opportunity to present my report from this morning's Student Affairs Committee meeting. The committee approved the minutes from the December 3, 2021 committee meeting. The committee also reviewed and approved the following action item, which you approved today by consent. Consideration of revisions to the Student Affairs Committee Charter. The committee also considered the following action item, which will be presented to you for action in today's meeting. Selection of a student trustee. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. You have heard the, the motion. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Where? Oh, yes, yeah. I lost my place there for a moment. Trustee McInnes' report contained an action item that we need to consider as a full board. Trustee McInnes, do you have a motion on the selection of the student trustee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Information regarding the two students who were selected as finalists to serve as our next student trustee was provided to you in advance of this meeting. After careful deliberation, the Student Affairs Committee recommends that the board select Olivia Hershey to serve in this position. By direction of the committee, I move that we select Olivia Hershey to serve as our next student trustee. The student will serve a one-year term beginning on May 7th, 2022, which happens to be the day after commencement, mark your calendars, and running through the 2022-23 academic year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Trustee. You have heard the motion to select Olivia Hershey as the next student trustee. Since this is a motion of the committee, a second is not required. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed by saying nay, the motion carries. The next agenda item is rescission of policy one, that's 1013, Student Code of Conduct. And prior to asking for a motion, I invite Ms. Daniel Whiteside, Vice President for Legal Affairs and Organizational Strategy to provide more information about this agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is very easy. Um, if you recall, uh, this body before has enacted or, or passed the rule on student, the student code of conduct. Um, and because of that, we no longer, it went into a rule because of that, we no longer need a policy. So this is just rescinding uh, the policy because it, the rule replaced it. 
Thank you, Ms. Whiteside. Do you have a explanation from Ms. Whiteside? And I move that we approve the rescission of policy 1-1013. Is there a second? Second. It is moved and seconded that policy 1-1013 be rescinded. Is there any discussion? There are none. All those in favor of rescinding policy 1.013, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Signify by saying nay. The motion carries. The next agenda item is the name and the request for the Joe and Kathy Maynard Family Athletics Complex and Maynard Family Field at Portera Stadium. Prior to asking for a motion, I invite Mr. Chris Phillips, Vice President for University Advancement and Executive Director of the APSU Foundation to provide more information about this agenda item. Thank you, Chairman. It's always a pleasure to be here today. It usually means when I'm here, there's good things happening in advancement, and I'm happy to announce that, that that's the case today. Um, on February 14th of 2022, the APSU Naming Committee was convened under policy, APSU policy 7009, to, to talk about the recognition of Joe and Kathy Maynard, who, as a lot of you know, since 2017, have been very generous to this university, not only to the athletics department, but also to all students on this campus. The Maynards, as you know, have attended many sporting events throughout the year and are avid supporters of not just Austin Peay, but the Clarksville community. The recent transformational gift of $15 million, which is currently the largest gift in Austin P State University history, was given to the athletics department to help them continue their total growth concept by assisting with facility upgrades to all athletic facilities, expanding the commitment to student athlete performance excellence in the development of the student athlete in the recruitment and retention of coaches and staff, among other objectives. Today, I bring forth the committee's recommendation to name the area at Austin P State University where the NCAA Division I athletic programs are housed after Joe and Kathy Maynard in honor of their recent transformational $15 million benefit Austin P Athletics. The proposed name will be the Joe and Kathy Maynard Family Athletics Complex. And the recognition for this would be at the naming at the following corners streets on campus. The map there online will show you Marion and Drain Streets, Ferris Drive and Drain Street, Ferris Drive and Rob Avenue, Rob Avenue and Marion Street, Marion Street and Henry Street. And they are indicated with the red X's on the, on the board. In addition to naming the athletic complex, the recommendation is also for you all to name Forterra Football Field, Maynard Family Field. Is the recommendation in my report. Thank you. You have heard the explanation from Mr. Phillips. I move that we approve the name and refer to the and Kathy Maynard Family Athletics Complex and the Maynard Family Field at Portera Stadium. Is there a second? Second. The name and request has been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Billy, can yes. you just give a round of applause real quickly for that? Point to a matching fund. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald. Celebrating the Maynards right now. It Down, is, Gerald. They don't need to uh, take away their moment. Uh, Here, not all those in favor of approving the name and the request signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed by saying nay. The motion carries. At this time, I recognize President Vicari to give his report and also report on the interim items. President Vicari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it is hard to believe that uh, I just celebrated my first year anniversary as the uh, 11th president of uh, Austin Peay State University. It's gone by very, very quickly. Time flies when you're having fun. And I am uh, certain to say that uh, I'm more excited uh, right now than I was on March 1st of 2021. And I was pretty darn excited on that day. 
Um, I am proud of what we've done and what we've accomplished in the past uh, 12 months. Uh, and I'm surrounded by a great team and uh, am surrounded by a great university full of faculty, staff, and students who've worked hard. And so I'm going to tick through uh, a, just a select number of items that uh, have been accomplished in the past 12 months, uh, just so that you can understand the hard work dedication uh, of, of everybody here at Austin P. Uh, this is not to take credit for any of this because none of this is really my work. Uh, I just want to celebrate the hard work uh, of everybody on campus. In academics, we've launched the Institute for National Security Stud and Military Studies and uh, a new academic program to, uh, to go along with that. We are national leaders uh, in uh, securing additional teachers into that noble profession with the Grow Your Own Teacher Apprenticeship Program uh, that has now gotten the, 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 the national federal stamp of approval as a, as a model for the rest of the nation to follow. Other academic innovations and strengths that I've tried to highlight to the board over the last year by bringing you up to the airport to highlight the aviation program out to the farm uh, so you could uh, get a sense of what we're doing out there with the observatory as well. The College of Business last night. Um, I'm very, very proud of where we're going uh, uh, academically. In advancement, we wrapped up uh, the What If campaign last summer, six months early, uh, secured the largest gift in Austin Peay's uh, history, and the candlelight ball is back. <laughs> in athletics conference champions last may in women's tennis and beach volleyball we are switching conferences to the a sun uh, coming up this summer we've established last fall a new partnership with Sabretooth sports and entertainment the marketing arm of the nashville predators uh, which is helping us already set revenue records uh, in in athletics and importantly for me and certainly the provost uh, we uh, secured five team academic conference trophies and established yet again another record GPA for our student athletes. So they are winning trophies uh, in competition and they're winning trophies in the classroom and that makes me immensely proud. Uh, in legal and organizational strategy, we've developed a new marketing campaign and strategy. We've established new mission, vision and values statements for the university and are hard at work on a new strategic plan. In student affairs, we've established now and, and firmly opened the Newton Military Family Resource Center, which is the largest by far uh, military resource center in the state of Tennessee. Our COVID vaccination site and testing center is a collaboration across student affairs and academic affairs, which uh, as of actually probably about a month and a half ago had already administered more than 5,000 doses of COVID vaccine and that continues uh, every single week to, uh, to be added to. And so I'm immensely proud uh, of that resource, not just for campus, but for the entire community. In finance and administration, you heard earlier this morning uh, that uh, we sailed through uh, an audit with no findings, which is rather rare. And so I'm immensely proud of the diligent work uh, in that area. And we have just started to gear up a new campus master plan, which will set the vision uh, for where this university is going facilities wise and campus wise uh, for the next foreseeable future. So I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of all of the work that's been done uh, in a very, very short period of time. Uh, it's tough sledding. None of these things were easy, uh, but easy things oftentimes are not worth doing. So we do the hard things uh, and we do them well and we get them done. Uh, at this time, I'm also excited to uh, announce the establishment of an Austin P. State University Military Hall of Fame. Uh, this honors governors, living or deceased, who have served uh, in the military with records of distinction uh, and perhaps sacrifice uh, to our nation, uh, who, and who have demonstrated dedicated support for and substantive contributions to the United States military and veterans. You know, we have many students, alumni and community members who've done incredible things uh, to protect our nation. And some of them have indeed given the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedom. And so it's time that this university, particularly with our connection to the military and all of our military affiliated students that we formally recognize this service and commitment in a visible way on campus. So a press release will go out shortly with more information and we expect to uh, have the inaugural class be inducted uh, this coming fall. 
At this point too, and I know we've already handed you a diff, but I do wanna thank Molly for her service uh, as, uh, as our student trustee. It was uh, a wonderful year getting to know you and, uh, and, and follow you both uh, uh, in competition and in the, in the classroom. You're doing wonderful things. I know you've got a, another meet coming up uh, next, uh, next week over at that school up north that we won't mention. Uh, and you're all set to break the records, right? Uh, in the relay, I think, I hope. Uh, Molly academically is going to uh, be graduating uh, in May and is set to take the NCLEX uh, exam for nursing in June uh, and will start a, a job in nursing at Vanderbilt in July. And so congratulations, Molly. set the bar high, so uh, uh, that's always a good thing. Finally, Mr. Chairman, your, uh, your packet uh, includes a list of contracts and agreements that have been executed and State Building Commission actions that have occurred since the last board meeting. <laughs> thank you, this concludes my remarks. All right, thank you, President Licari. Are there any questions or comments to President Licari? All right, thanks, great job, thank you. <laughs> and by the way, Molly, I have a bevy of doctors in Vanderbilt, so I look forward to seeing you. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There is another item I need to bring to the board's attention, uh, which regards the evaluation of our president. If you remember, President Lacari came on board March the 1st of 2021. And the board voted to waive an annual evalu evaluation, which is required by our bylaws. But we waived it since he was only here a short period of time. So, President Akari, uh, we will comply with our bylaws and do an evaluation this year. And I have asked, and he has agreed, Trustee Don Jenkins will chair that evaluation process and report back to the board. So uh, we get that out of my business, out of the way. As a reminder, our next regular scheduled meeting will take place June the 10th, 2022. And I move that the meeting adjourn. Is there a second? Second. And we have a bunch of seconds. <laughs> it is moved and seconded that the meeting adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The eyes have it, and the meeting is adjourned. And thank you all very much. And thank all the staff, faculty, and all for attending. We appreciate it.